Oh, so inside bars. So basically, if you are in a trade, that's the thing that I want to drive, drive up. If you are in a trade, let's say you are in a bear trend here, and you get an inside bar. The inside bar can be strong, can be weak. This one is a, a weak one, so tail on top. So any reversal that starts from this bar is likely to be minor and leading more to trading range or trend resumption rather than complete and utter high momentum reversal. Compared to like this one, which is a strong bar with very tight channel. So this one had a better shot at completely reversing than this one. Same with this one, bad sell signal bar, inside bar, odds are buyers below these bars. But the point is, every time that you get one, the market is in equilibrium and you're better off exiting your trade. Especially if it is in, in the opposite direction than, than your trade. Because that's a point of no decision. So for example, here we have this leg down, likely to have a second leg, but then you have an inside bar. This can go either way now. Okay. But when the market is moving in one direction, so breakout, this is an outside bar and breakout. So we are more likely to go up. But then when you get an inside bar, this can be the start of the move down. So you have to be careful with exiting on these bars. Most of the time, if they are weak, like this one, you can be more tolerant with your stop. Like, you know, don't exit as it triggers, you know, have a stop above, you know, like this is, this is the breakout point, put your stop at least. If you're not putting, the, putting it there, hide it above something like a resistance level. So you can be more tolerant with exits from these bars, especially if the trend is strong and you have open gaps. But they also mean indecision and the market can do the complete opposite after them. So inside bars are important in that regard. The other thing is that if you are uh, if you're looking for scalps and suddenly you get an inside bar, then you have to you have to not scalp. So what do I mean by that? Let's go to five minutes. All right, so uh, you have a trend and then it, it looks like a micro channel and then you suddenly get inside bars like this. This is in the direction of the trend. So you can still you can still buy and hold long, but if they are opposite, like this is a bear micro channel, and then there is an opposite inside bar, you have to be very careful and not sell above the high of this bar, because these can lead to reversals. At this point, this bear micro channel is less in effect than in decision. Okay. And we can talk about this for hours, looking at different examples. Here's another one. So we have a bull micro channel, but it's getting a bear bar. And if you want to enter with limit orders below the lows of the prior bars, this is not a bar that you want to enter below its low. You want to enter below the low of a bull bar, not a bear inside bar. So the buy is not aggressive. It's not below the low of this bar. The buy is below the low of a bull bar or using something else like a micro gap, like a tick gap or something like that. You see this, I mean, this is not probably a leg two trap because it's too consistent. It looks too good and it has open gaps. There is one here. I think these are not touching. Right, so this is this is an open micro gap. There's an open micro gap, open micro gap. So this bear inside bar is not enough to reverse this, but it is because it's an inside bar. It is telling you that you shouldn't buy below the low of this bar. Now there is about like twenty percent chance that you miss the trade. It's better than getting trapped into a bad trade. So. Don't buy below the low of this bar. 
the buy is at a different support level. This bar is not a support level. This tail is, that's the first one, immediate one, the second one. And then because these two bars have a tick gap, you see that tick gap right there. That's another support level. So the buy zone is between this low and using this tick gap as your reference. And then the scaling is during these other gaps. These could be used for, for scaling in. Which means I'm implying that if you are scaling in, scaling in is not an equal size scaling. It's not like I'm going to buy here and continue buying every three points down. That's stupid. There are better ways of doing it. And that's we're just taking a quick look to the left side of the chart. Take a look at what you see here and then use those as references for scaling it. They work much better in my experience. But for example, in this case, we have three strong micro gaps. This one is blue. This one is blue. This one is blue. That creates a range of support and you can use them. You can think of them as a chunk of support. They, they add up as one unit of gap and they use the midpoint or something. That's the midpoint and that was support. You have to practice it though. You have to look at a lot of examples of them to, to get quick at spotting them. And sometimes the market doesn't get them. Like this one was a micro gap. So this one, this price was a good limit order short entry point, but the market just ran away from it. And this happens too. I mean, less often, but it happens. So if you are in a micro channel and you're looking like this one, you're looking to, to short, but by the time that you're getting your setup, there's an opposite inside bar. You have to be very careful. This inside bar, the high is not a short. The short is usually at a different price. In this case, it was this last micro gap. That was a, that was a better one. Let's, let's look at, let's see if we can find some more examples because I used to get trapped in these left, right, and center, and then just hate myself for not paying attention. I just have a quick question about those. Yes, please. Uh, sure. What's the difference between the orange highlight and the blue one? I just want to understand. Oh, you, you mean the micro gaps, these ones? Yeah. Okay, so if, if you look at this closely, look at this first gap here, okay? This gap is forming between, it's forming between this bar, and this bar, this one, okay? So this bar, so bar 16 and bar 18 are responsible for this gap that is painted orange. Look at the two sides. This is a bull bar, this is a bear bar. The gap is a bear gap, okay? Yeah, it's a micro gap, but the bars that are responsible for creating it are not equally strong. One of them is the opposite, opposite to the direction of the gap. This means this gap has less uh, energy, less weight, less importance than the next one, which is between two strong bear bars. So this is a bear bar. It's closed. It's at, you see the IBS there, it's at 50%. But this is a 50% bar closed in the middle after the prior bar. So it inherits the energy of the prior bar. So that's why this, the algorithm considers this as a bear bar rather than an unknown bar or doji bar. So this gap is forming between two bear bars. Therefore it's painted blue. It says, this is more trustworthy than this one. Uh, same with this one. So bear bar, bull, bull bar, this is again, above, so you see IBS is 54.7, 17. So it is closing above the midpoint, this is a bull bar, but this is a bear bar. So the gap is forming between two inconsistent bars, therefore it's less reliable as an area of support.
which means if you see two or three legs up, odds are this gap is going to be tested right to the bottom of the gap to here, which is what happened. So this one, this one was followed by a strong one. So now the two of them are going to be the area of resistance. So this midpoint is now reliable. But that is my classification. I, I look at the two sides. If the two sides are strong, I think of the micro gap as a better gap than when the two sides are not strong or they're inconsistent. It's one is full and the other one is bare, or one is a doji, doji like bar. And that is how these are painted. So, micro channel, fairly strong, open gaps. But inside bar, it looks like it is bullish too. It's 60% close. All right. So you have to be careful with this. This is not a cell above the high of this bar. This is a cell above the high of a bear bar. This is a bear bar. This is a bear bar. Or look back to see what happened. Bulls got probably trapped somewhere around here, buying below these lows. So the limit order short is usually further further up because of the effect of that inside bar. Coming down, so we have four trending highs coming down, down, down. But bull inside bar, what's the percentage? Goes 52%, okay? So don't sell above the high of this bar. The sell is above the high of a bear bar, and that's the bear bar. And by the time the market gets here, Okay, so you also have the moving average. So the sell zone is probably from here to the nearest resistance, which is these highs and the moving average. So that defines that defines an area that you can use for placing the borders, which is somewhere around here. Right. Thanks. Sure. So this this is really important because I paid a heavy price for learning.